Hi, I'm Michelle Avis. I'm an engineer and the co-author of the book Essential Rainwater Harvesting. Uh, hi, I'm Peter Coombs. I'm I'm also an engineer and a scientist, and um, I work with Michelle Avis on the uh, the rainwater harvesting course we're going to talk about. Peter, here's an illustration showing a typical rainwater harvesting system and many of the recommended components. In this short clip, I want to zoom in to the component labeled number six, the hot water tank, and ask you some questions about your decades of research pertaining specifically to the discoveries you and your team made about hot water systems in rainwater supply. That's fine, Michelle. Very happy to help. <laughs> Let's start by defining what is a hot water system. Well, there's two types of hot water systems. There's storage hot water systems that store a volume of water, say 100 litres or 200 litres or 300 litres um, or gallons, and and they keep the water at a, at a set temperature so that... Um, so a household can have a hot water supply. So, um, so that's just storing hot water and continually heating it to keep it at a given temperature. And then there's the on-demand or instantaneous hot water systems that um, rapidly heat water when you turn on a hot water tap um, from whatever the, the cold temperature is to the desired hot temperature. So that's why they're called instantaneous because they... Um, very quickly heat water from cold to the desired uh, water temperature. With that, I grabbed this table out of a paper that you co-published, and um, I'd love for you to walk us through what this table is saying. This table is based on our decade or so research into domestic hot water services. Um, this one is based on storage hot water systems. Um, what we actually found is that uh, temperatures below 50 degrees Celsius, which is, I think, Michelle, you've kindly put 126 degrees Fahrenheit there. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a very significant reduction um, in coliforms, E. coli, and heterotrophic plate counts, which is um, almost all bacteria, um, and but there was some residual in the the in the maximum uh, column in the in the far left as you're looking at the screen. But the um, but the mean results you can see uh, are very low counts. So if you then go down to between fifty degrees and fifty nine degrees Celsius you can see um, the, the number, the mean results from the testing is reduced to very, very small numbers. Mm. Yeah, you know, 0.0045 of a, of a coliform uh, mm -hmm. doesn't exist. Um, and you can see even the maximum results is um, one count of a coliform and none of the E. coli and the... You know, 6,000 of heterotrophic plate counts, but bacteria is in all water. We're concerned about pathogens. So it's it's removed the majority of the indicators of pathogens, but I'll, I'll come to that in a second. At above 60 degrees, um, you can actually see there's an absolute elimination um, of coliforms and E. coli, and there's almost none, none of the heterotrophic plate counts left in, in water. Um, so just note that your mains water supply will have heterotrophic plate counts in it because that's all bacteria and you need bacteria in water. Um, but the indicators of pathogens, uh, E. coli and coliforms are completely reduced. There's other work where we actually looked at pathogens directly from um, okay. Legionella all the way through to... Um, um, Salmonella and the, the standard ones, and the more the more pathogenic the bacteria, the more fragile it was. For example, Legionella was killed very rapidly from very small changes of temperature, not absolute temperatures. Um, 
and wow. uh, salmonella and other bacteria um, pathogens were very, very heat sensitive at low temperatures. So what this is saying is that a hot water system dramatically improves the water quality and is really good at eliminating bacteria. And that would be no matter the water source, correct? Whether it's uh, rainwater or utility water or groundwater. Absolutely. And um, this was a big discovery. Uh, it rewrote some textbooks. So, um, so at the temperatures you would operate your domestic hot water system, in storage, we discovered that it eliminated majority of um, bacteria that would be associated with pathogens and absolutely eliminated most of the pathogens. Then it was argued that, oh, but that's only storage and instantaneous won't because it's only heating water for a short amount of time. Well, the opposite is true. The instantaneous on-demand hot water systems or even more effective at lower temperatures is reducing bacteria because the bacteria, the pathogen bacteria and pathogens is are impacted by what's known as heat shock, not by absolute heat. So the sudden change in temperature killed everything off. So um, it was a, a big discovery and important for rainwater harvesting and water quality worldwide. Hmm. Thanks, Peter. And if you thought that was interesting, Please join Peter and I at our upcoming free webinar on January 13th. In the free webinar, you'll discover why health, environmental, and economic issues make complete dependence on public water a risky strategy, how home scale rainwater harvesting benefits you, your garden, your community, and the ecosystems downstream, and how simple it really is to set up a safe, effective, and rainwater a ra safe, effective rainwater harvesting system. And we'll, uh, we'll also uh, supply a, uh, a, a, ca a calculation spreadsheet we've developed for rainwater harvesting with, with everyone who attends. And we're very happy to answer your particular questions and, um, and, and have discussions about the key issues that, that you believe are, are necessary. See you there. Okay.